So with that, I just invite us um, to turn within for a moment. That as you hear the sound of the tone, this is our practice, that we practice it here together and we practice it throughout our day. Where in any given moment, we can engage in a holy instant, which is the engagement, the turning of our attention and our awareness to source, to God, to creator. And therein lies our identity, our happiness, and the experience of choosing heaven. And so that's what we do when we do this together. And as I turn within, I turn within with a happiness, a joyful expectation of experiencing the wash of love, of peace, of joy, of understanding, to descend into my consciousness and my awareness and to flood my entire being with the light and the illumination of the source of my being, that which I call God. But I know absolutely to be the beloved of my being, to be love itself. That I declare and decree that this is the only relationship of value in my life and how grateful I am for this devotional, worshipful, intimate time. Where as I turn to source, it is there fully, purely whole, and holy, beautiful, divine, ever giving of itself to all of creation, having extended the divine idea as word, as Christ, creating that spark of the divine that has gone forth and illuminated all of creation. As I enter into this garden, I align, I align, I align, I harmonize with source. I give it my full attention and appreciation. And it is here that I abide in perfect safety. Allowing peace and love. To be the seeds of the divine that I accept and nourish in this holy instant. I accept the love of God. I accept and receive peace. God and I are one. This is my identity. I rest here in a moment of stillness in this consciousness now.
as I take the next breath, I exclaim that this is heaven. My mind stayed upon thee is heaven. Heaven is home. It feels good and right, safe and secure. I consciously choose heaven now. I choose love now. And this is what is worshipped in the church of my consciousness. This is what I devote my life, living, purpose, extension, and expression to. And as I partake and appropriate and embody this, I become the living Christ. I know who I am. I know what I am. And I know how I serve. I am word. And I allow this word to activate and infuse my entire being with its love and its power. I decree this time together to be rich, to be opulent, to be ever so good that I receive exactly what I'm here to receive. I drink of the waters and it nourishes me in perfect ways. I bless all of those who come into contact with this vibra vibrational field that we know ever so clearly our oneness in God as Christ. I release this word. It returns fulfilled. I need do nothing. It's already done in the mind of God. What else need be done? I harmonize, align, and celebrate, and so it is. And it is from here <laughs> that I allow the zeal of spirit to spring forth from me to do that which is mine to do this day. And as I begin to open the body eyes myself, you may continue in this holy and sacred tryst, but what I am to do today is to continue the conversation of our Lenten journey and to consider and allow the light of my consciousness and awareness to shine upon the concept and the idea of heaven. And I believe it is from Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith that dropped into my awareness the utterance that heaven is the realm of ever-expanding good. It's a one of my favorite definitions, but in unity, or not but, and in unity, we, we identify heaven and hell as states of consciousness. And so as we have fasted from a mindset that has previously been focused in separation, in negativity, in conditioning, and consciously turned away from that, denied the power of that, and have consciously 
deliberately, committedly affirmed that God is, I am, our divine identity and have chosen to place upon the altar everything I think I thought I knew <laughs> and everywhere where fear had, had nestled in, whether known or unknown, and made a home within me, my consciousness. And even my very best thoughts, my personality, the body, it is all placed upon the altar, including my will that has appeared to be separate from the will of God which is merely for my happiness, our happiness, our joy, as any good parent, as any good creator would wish or want, is for our joy, for our happiness. I've released concepts, I've fasted from concepts of sin, concepts of, of inherent sickness, concepts of, of death. And I have affirmed and embraced divine worth, worthiness, the inheritance, the Christed nature of my being, the wholeness that I am, the oneness that I experience in this heaven consciousness, not only with creator, but with myself, my divine self, and with my brothers and sisters. And I have affirmed and accepted the eternality of life these are the seeds of the divine that I accept into the garden of my consciousness, the church of my being, being devoted in faith and faithfulness in this pathway. And choosing heaven today is, is a continuation of our journey and our, of the choice that we make. So I'm feasting on concepts of these ideas of these affirmative ideas, of these ideas in the mind of God. And so the state of consciousness that we partake of, as we pause here for a moment to approach the reading that is given, and so it says, heaven, <laughs> day 26, God idealized two universal planes of consciousness, the heaven and the earth. Or more properly, quote, the heavens and the earth, end quote. And my father, mother, God's house, there are many mansions, many dim dimensions. And I like the shift of the word heaven to the plural. There are many dimensions of consciousness, many dimensions of heaven. One is the realm of pure ideals, the other of thought forms. So heaven is the realm of pure ideas and the other, the earthly concept of thought forms. God does not create the visible universe directly. As man, as we make cement pavement, but God creates the ideas that are used by his intelligence, its intelligent image and likeness to make the universe. Thus, God's creations are always spiritual. Man's creations, our creations, are both material and spiritual according to our understanding. This to me is transformational. This to me is huge because when we contemplate and consider and we've been conditioned to believe that God created, you know, the, the earth, the world, let's just use the word world, then what was always confusing to me on my journey was how, how could God create the world that I'm perceiving and seeing? There, there is so much trauma and pain and violence and all of those things. And, and as I have traversed this uh, spiritual journey and con contemplation in this lifetime, I have come to believe that, um, that what has been created, what was created in the beginning was the word, was the idea, the divine idea in the mind of God, which we call Christ. 
and that that Christ extends out and forth. And, and that the world that I see is a world that is a reflection of my perception. And so if I can behold the world as, as God is, I would see it completely different. And that's what our whole journey is. Our whole journey is to see beyond the appearances of what our consciousness, the consciousness separate from the, that believed itself to be separate from the mind of God made. And that creation, creation is that which we create when we're harmonized with the mind of God. And so the rising and the seeing a world anew, and you know, we, we hear that out in the world, a new earth, a new world. Um, we, we contemplate that the world that we're perceiving is illusory and a dream. And in some cultures, they call it, you know, Maya. And it's, it's, and, and it is what we are experiencing in our evolutionary consciousness of returning home to heaven. And that as we shift our consciousness, what we see shifts. And that's what our practice is. But for me, this was transformational, um, that God didn't really create the world as I perceive it. But that back of that is this divine idea, this divine ideal, and um, that it is held in trust in this mind of God and that God creates of itself in its image and likeness, which is spirit, which is spiritual, which is why in my classes, I will have individuals introduce themselves. This body has the name Claudia, but what and who I am is spirit. I am spirit unlimited and free. And so continuing, Jesus of all those claiming intimate acquaintance with spiritual things gave heaven definite location Quote, the kingdom of heaven is within you, end quote. This kingdom is now ready. It exists. It's a present now system. Quote, the fields are white already unto harvest, end quote. So those quotes are attributed to Jesus. The conditions are ripe. The conditions of the Christ of our being is ripe. But only those who who only those come in who are willing to exchange for it their ideas of earthly possessions. So those things that I said earlier that we place upon the altar are those things that we have perceived and conceived of um, in the thought system of, of separation. Every earthly link must be broken. Every mortal love crucified. Whoa. This is the way Jesus entered this kingdom, and his way is the way we all must employ. And so, gosh, it sounds like we have to crucify that which we love and, and that all earthly links must be broken. And, and truly what that is saying is that our attachment, our attachment to the material, our attachment to form is to be released. That, that and how can we how can we do that? And and there's a statement that Jesus brings forth in the way of mastery that says, you know, um, that which is birthed in time ends in time. That which is uh, becomes the materialization or the condensation of thought forms that become what we call demonstration or manifestation are temporary, um, temporary. In, in this realm, they're temporary uh, symbols and they represent the ideas that have been held in mind. It's the ideas that are eternal and that that which is manifested and that which becomes form passes away. And so we are much happier when we, when we don't hold on tightly, when we don't attach to form because, and when we focus on the formlessness back of form everything's always changing in form. 
<laughs> One of my friends, I've heard her say in the past three days, you know, the only thing you can really count on is change. Well, yeah, when, we're, when we are focused on conditions, when we're focused on circumstances, when we're focused on events, they're always changing. Relationships are always changing form, but the love that they represent is eternal. And so this is what we've chosen to, um, to journey through in this experience. This, this, and this is where our yay, yay, and our nay, nay comes in, you know? Um, that, that the form of, of the conditions and the demonstrations, we enjoy them while they're here, but we also know that they are fleeting but that the love that they represent is that which is eternally held in the mind of God. And so we're always saying yes, yes, yes to the quality, to, to the God quality and the divine idea that is back of, that is underneath is the substance upon which we create and make the manifestations of this experience. So, Continuing on in Fillmore, heaven is everywhere present. It is the orderly, lawful adjustment of God's kingdom in man's mind, body, and affairs. So remembering that divine law, the divine mind, the idea, the divine idea, and the expression and that when we adjust, when we properly align, you know, when we stop having everything upside down and backwards, thinking that form, manifestations, conditions, circumstances are causing our experience, and then we, we deny that as having power and we return to first cause, to divine mind, then that's when our adjustment has occurred and we're harmonized then. And that is when we are truly creators, when we're joined in the divine mind. You see this experience that we've been having that has believed itself to be separate has misidentified ourselves. And, and in that misidentification, identification, we've pretended as if we were God, and we've pretended as if we forgot our source. And in that pretending, we've, we've made up all kinds of dramas, traumas, and situations. Thank God, thank God that, that we can break our, our, our connection with that. You see, it works that way too, and that we can break our, oh yeah, that's not cause. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh silly me, I forgot I was playing God and, and that I can place it upon the altar, return to, to my consciousness and, and realign it with source. And I, I can um, remember myself as God created me. Not as I thought I created him, but as God created me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not the authority here. The Course in Miracles calls that other way of being where the authority problem, that we all have an authority problem. Anybody here have an authority problem? <laughs> you know, and, and that, that means that we've misidentified what our source is and that we return to source. And that in that, we allow the Christ consciousness to direct. So... Returning back, so it is the orderly, lawful adjustment of God's kingdom in our mind, body, and affairs. It is the Christ consciousness, the realm of divine ideas, a state of consciousness in harmony with the thoughts of God. Yeah. Heaven is within every one of us, a place, of, a, place a, a conscious sphere of mind, a conscious sphere having all the attractions described or imaged as belonging to heaven. I love that. Having all of the attractions, you know, we talk about the law of attraction, but what bubbled up in my mind was like the, the you know, the, the um, amusement park, the attractions. What are the attractions? You know, what is attracting us as described or imagined as belonging to heaven. And 
so, oh my gosh, wow. Okay, time to, uh, <laughs> I could go on and on. <laughs> So, so this idea of ha heaven, this idea of the realm of ever expanding good, you know, we've talked about our pathway, about how we enter into this garden of our Eden of our consciousness. And there's a whole bunch of scriptures connected with today's reading. And I invite you to go ahead and, and read those and remember in unity that we, we view scripture metaphysically. And one of the great tools that we can use is this book called The Revealing Word or the metaphysical Bible um, interpretation. But there's a really great resource I've been wanting to share with you, um, and it's truthunity.net. And you can look up these parables because all of the parables for today are the kingdom of heaven is like, and it's comparing. And it's everything that we've, we've been discussing, but a lot of them are about, oh my gosh, these weeds that are in my garden. And, you know, um, and then how do we cultivate this garden? How do we uh, release these uh, ideas that we've sown and cultivated that are unlike the, the kingdom of heaven, unlike the idea of heaven. And, and that the beauty of this pathway is that when they sprout up, when they rise up, that we, we just keep practicing what we've been saying. You know, we, we place them upon the altar, we surrender them, we disconnect our, our connection with them, and we go back of it and we learn what is the gift, what is the pearl that we can receive so that we might return to heaven, that we might uproot that from our subconscious, from our subjective. And so I take a breath here. This is our play. And so how do we enter the queendom of heaven? What Jesus says repeatedly is that we become as a little child. Everything that we've talked about everything along this journey. And by the time we're at day 26, we can begin to take it less seriously. We can lighten up. And as children, as that childlike nature, that, that we're cultivating this relationship, the only relationship that matters to the child is with the parent, that gives all in the ideal setting, the parent gives all only once the happiness and joyfulness for their child. And so that, that we become in this childlike nature of, of forgiving easily, of laughing at ourselves, so silly me, of, of, of releasing the concept of seriousness and that as we do so, that we lighten up that there's an effervescence in our nature that is playful. That, that, oh, we've been playing in this realm for a while, and oh, we don't like the outcome of that. We don't like the conditions of that. We can let that go. And oh, look, we can play in the kingdom, the queendom of heaven now. And that, um, that, that, that we trust source. We trust the goodness, the graciousness, the joyfulness, the peacefulness that is given there. And we turn our attention and awareness there. And we giggle and we laugh along the way. Why? How can we do that? Because our experience, our, our return, our home, our heaven, is assured, it is already done. We're awakening and remembering the path. And we do that together. We're doing that together right now. And so we take the hands of our brothers and our sisters and we walk forth. We forgive easily, we laugh a lot, we giggle at ourselves, we, we put on that childlike nature that we're simply at play here. We're simply at play in the queendom of heaven. And so as we conclude, we can praise God for the peace of our higher self. We can rejoice and, and be glad in the possession of the holy city within. 
and with our inner vision, we can see that the gates are wide open. The holy place pervades our consciousness and we can affirm, my mind is stayed on thee. My mind is single. My eye is single and I rest in thy holy peace and power now and forevermore. We go forth and multiply this consciousness joyfully, for we are at play in the kingdom and queendom of heaven this day. And so it is. Amen.